In this video, we want to look at how to do sign analysis on a polynomial. Uh, this often is used to help solve inequalities, to understand when polynomials are increasing and decreasing, um, to find domains of various functions. So we often need to think about uh, the signs that a polynomial takes. Our basic strategy um, is outlined. We're going to factor as much as we can. Um, because it's factored, we're then going to look for the roots or the zeros of those factors. We use those roots to find a number line. We'll create a number line uh, showing those roots as the, the breakpoints. That will create a whole bunch of intervals. We'll then test each interval by choosing a point from the interval and identify what sign our polynomial has on the interval. And uh, once we have our sign analysis summary, we're going to interpret our results. All right, well, we have a polynomial here. Uh, it's the quantity x squared minus 7x plus 10 times x squared minus 6x plus 9. I've started this way so that we have a partially factored polynomial to work with, and we'll just need to finish factoring a few steps. So let's start. We want to take this first uh, quadratic factor, x squared minus 7x plus 10, and we are going to try to think of that as itself a product. So what do we have? We've got a uh, constant coefficient of 10. Our leading coefficient is 1. And so if I think about that, 1 times 10 is 10. We're looking for factors of 10 that add to negative 7. And pretty soon we realize that if we do x minus 2 times x minus 5, uh, that will be the factoring that we want. Next, we look at the second quadratic. We've got x squared minus 6x plus 9. Again, constant term is 9. Leading coefficient is 1. We're looking for factors of 9 that add to negative 6. And so I should have put extra parentheses. We fairly soon realize that's x minus 3 times x minus 3. All right, so let's rewrite this polynomial in its factored form. We have x minus 2 times x minus 5 and times x minus 3. It appeared twice, so that factor is squared. And um, now I'm just going to clean up a little bit so that we have some space to work with. Since we factored it, we're ready for step two. We're going to find the roots of each factor. Um, and so what we're really doing is we're asking what makes my function equal zero? And our first factor, x minus two, will equal zero if x equals two. Our second factor, x minus 5, will equal 0 when x equals 5. And our third factor, which is squared, x minus 3 equals 0 when x equals 3. And so those are my three roots, or my three zeros. And we're going to use those um, to mark down our sign analysis number line. So I've created a number line, and I've marked each of my three roots, 2, 3, and 5. And one thing that a lot of students don't do that's useful is just remind myself that my function has a value of 0 at each of these three points. So I'm going to consistently label my x values below the number line and the value or the sign of the function above the number line. So we have three points where my function is zero. And this now creates, um, I'm ready for my sign analysis line. We are going to think about intervals. I've got this interval from minus infinity to two. I have another from two to three, another from three to five, and finally one that goes from five to infinity. We're going to create a sign analysis summary by choosing values. So you don't need to write these down necessarily, but for example, I might pick x equals 0 uh, from the interval negative infinity to 2. And I'm going to think about what sign does my f of x function have by putting that value of x into the formula. 
and seeing what comes out. So x minus 2 with x equals 0 is negative 2. x minus 5, that'll be a negative 5. x minus 3 will be negative 3 and it'll be squared. So in our mind, we have a negative factor times a negative factor times a negative factor squared. The thing that I really need to summarize is what sign will that be? A negative, well four negatives is even number. Four negatives multiplied together will be positive. Okay, so now I do it again. I think about a point between two and three, for example, two and a half. I think about the signs, and so putting two and a half in, I get a positive times a negative times a negative squared. So I've got a positive, a negative, and a negative squared. There are three negatives, and so the overall sign of that entire interval is negative. Okay. So I think about what x could I use between 3 and 5, maybe 4, and what, what signs do I get? I get 4 minus 2 is positive, 4 minus 5 is negative, 4 minus 3 is positive, so I get a positive times a negative times a positive squared. This time there's one negative, and so I get a negative sign on that interval. And our final interval, x value is bigger than 5, we might pick um, x equals 6. When I do that, all of my factors are squared. There are four positive factors, and when I multiply those together, I get a plus. That's my sign analysis summary. We have plus, minus, minus, plus. The reason that we didn't change sign at 3 is because that factor was squared. It's always positive. So when it changed from a negative factor to a positive factor, the square of it didn't change sign. All right, I'm going to, uh, again, clean this up just a little bit, and then we'll go to the last step, which is interpreting. Okay, the reason that we do sign analysis is to understand where a function is positive and negative. And so we're going to use this to help solve inequalities where the inequality says where is a function positive, which means greater than zero, or negative, which is less than zero. So imagine that I was solving an inequality. Um, f of x is greater than zero. And so from the sign analysis number line, we are looking for all the x's that make the function positive. So imagine now that I create a set. I'm going to draw a set um, below the sign analysis number line. So we want to include all of the points where the function is positive. And so I get this interval that goes from minus infinity to 2 and from 5 to infinity. That's my set. If I were to be solving a slightly different equation, for example, f of x is greater than or equal to 0, then this time I'm looking for the set of things where the function is either positive or 0. And so, again, the positive set we've already found but when I start to include the equal zero, I fill in the points. So I get two made at zero, three made at zero, and five made at zero. Okay? So if I were to be solving the inequality f of x is greater than zero, we'll have to write this up at the top a little bit. My solution to f of x is greater than zero has a solution minus infinity to 2 union 5 to infinity. 
If I were to solve the inequality f of x is greater than or equal to 0, my solution needs to add three values to that set. Two of them, at 2 and 5, we get to do by just including the endpoints. But 3 is not part of an interval, and so we need to add a single point with curly braces as a single a singleton set. In a similar way, I could solve inequalities where the set is negative or where the set is less than or equal to zero. And that's how I use sign analysis to help me solve inequalities.